Hello everyone! Today we are taking a quick look at A Quiet Place Day One. Written and directed by Michael Sarnowski and starring Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn. Nyong'o plays Sam, a terminally ill cancer patient living at a hospice near New York City with her cat Frodo. Yes, Sam and Frodo. One day she is convinced by one of the people who works at the hospice to attend a marionette show in the city with some of the other residents. But while they're in the city, a bunch of meteor-like objects start crashing down from space and they bring the aliens we all know and love. And while the world is going to shit, Sam meets Eric, an English law student in New York who is badly shell-shocked by everything that's going on, and the two of them try to survive together while making as little noise as possible. And as you might expect, not making any noise in New York City, very difficult. As someone who enjoyed the first two Quiet Place movies quite a bit, this one was okay, but it felt like a step backward. It still has its suspenseful moments, those aliens are still terrifying as hell, mostly because they're just big, unstoppable killing machines. Even the military has a hard time dealing with them. And I did like Lupita Nyong'o as Sam. She is very much a pessimistic character, understandably so. I mean, she has terminal cancer, not a lot to look forward to. And this puts her in an interesting position during the end of the world because everyone else is trying to flee for their lives and she's like, I don't have a life to flee for, I might as well hang around and enjoy myself. So while everyone else runs to the evacuation boats on the coast, Sam goes to find some pizza. And if I were in her position, I would probably do the same thing. Eric, the lawyer that's played by Joseph Quinn, was an interesting character. When we first meet him, he is clearly just struggling to process everything that's going on. His brain is just barely functioning. And instead of trying to evacuate, he ends up following Sam like a lost puppy for... reasons. Which was a little weird because Sam is not trying to evacuate and he should be going the other direction as she repeatedly tells him to do. And then later in the movie he does try to evacuate anyway, so... What exactly was he trying to accomplish? I don't know. It was just weird. And the relationship between those two characters was very awkward, which I guess is kind of the point, but I wasn't really sure what to make of it. It just felt to me like they were stuck together when they really had no reason to be. And because they have to make as little noise as possible to avoid attracting the big alien killing machines, there are long stretches of the movie with no dialogue at all. This worked pretty well for sun scenes and not so well with others. The first two Quiet Place movies had an advantage in this area because one of the characters was hearing impaired, so everyone in the family knew sign language, but we don't have that in this movie. No one's deaf, Sam is just dying. It also seemed to be really arbitrary which sounds would provoke the aliens into attacking. After all, the aliens attack and start wrecking shit in New York City, eventually the power goes out, and in the theater that everyone's hiding out in, the generator suddenly kicks on. And that thing makes a lot of noise. So one guy frantically runs out there to shut it off and succeeds, but then as he turns away from it, his shirt catches on something and tears, and apparently the sound of the tearing shirt is what prompted the aliens to suddenly jump out and be like, Rawr! and they kill him. And... Why was that sound in particular what attracted them? The huge noise from the generator, nothing. Torn shirt, dead. There are a couple of moments like that. It's inconsistent which sounds will attract them, and also some sounds apparently provoke them to attack right away, while others will cause them to go, huh? You guys hear something? Well, guess it was nothing. Doop -do -do. Jimon Hansu actually reprises his role from the second movie, but... I'm not really sure why they bothered, because he is in remarkably little of A Quiet Place Day 1. And I would not have guessed that from the trailer, because he's in there, I figured that meant he was going to be in more of the movie. No, I really wish they had given him more to do. Hell, I wish many filmmakers would give this guy more to do. And I should probably say a word about Frodo the cat. First of all, the cat does not die, so no need to worry about that. But I will say that cat was probably the worst actor in the whole movie. That cat was entirely too calm throughout this entire movie, even when it gets dragged underwater, which happens more than once. Damn thing nearly drowns on more than one occasion. They take it out of the water. Oh, it's fine. I had a really hard time buying that. And also, the cat didn't even need to be there. You take the cat out of the story, not much changes. Overall, I would not say this was a bad movie. It's fine, it's just nowhere near as good as the first two, and I was a little disappointed. If you're a fan of the first two Quiet Place movies, I would say it's worth checking out, but I would wait for streaming. And that's all I have to say about A Quiet Place Day 1. Till next time, take care.